In this video, we are going to be trying to recreate Tom DeLonge's guitar tone using nothing but free plugins so you can do it at home too for no monies at all, which is the right amount of money. But before we do that, I want to give a huge shout out to this video's sponsor. This week's sponsor is nobody. There's no sponsor. I'm the sponsor. Uh, I don't have a sponsor, but I do have a wonderful community, the Weirdo Cult over on Patreon. And if you'd like to help support me doing the thing that I'm doing, you can go check that out. It's totally up to you. No pressure, but just know that it's available and I'll tell you all about it at the end of the video. Okay, with that out of the way, there's a few things we got to go over. In this video, I'm going to run down a brief overview of the amps and guitars that Tom uses, has used, and currently uses, the tone that we're going to try to get, and, and the, the, the steps to, to get there. We're also going to go through all the amps and all the plugins I'm going to put up. I'm going to put up a, a bunch of screenshots so you'll be able to copy all of the settings that I have along the way, and you too, if you follow along at home, could hopefully get your own free Tom DeLong guitar tone, because ripping off other people is fun. <laughs> and uh, basically, I just want you to know that I'm responsible for anything good the band has to offer. And stick around to the end of the video, because I'm going to put it all together in a mix, so you can kind of see how it all works cohesively gelled together into a punk rock guitar thing. All right, let's dive, let's get into the guitar stuff. Yeah! <laughs> tones. Okay, so with the studio recordings, at least from Enema of the State onwards, uh, Tom DeLonge used Jerry Finn's collection of guitars and amps to, to do all the recordings. So it's, it's widely known that he used a bunch of different guitars, a lot of Telecasters and stuff, and he used a bunch of different amps because Jerry Finn was a prolific guitar collector and a prolific amp collector, and he just loved guitar stuff. So we're not really going to be able to pin down exactly the studio tone because because it's all over the place and it was really expensive and there's a lot of amps and there's not a lot of documentation for the earlier days about what was used in the studio. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to try to really lock into a live tone and specifically the live tone from the Mark, Tom and Travis show era, kind of like Enema of the State, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket era, uh, most notably in the uh, big day out performance that they did in Australia. When recording Enema of the State, which is my personal favorite tone wise, I believe they used a Fender Princeton combo plugged in to a Marshall 1960s A cabinet with some Royer ribbon microphones and a Neumann U87. There are actually pictures of this up on the Royer website that you'll be seeing right now as I'm speaking, which is wonderful. This is kind of the only available information of that period of time when it comes to recording. I, I looked through a bunch of interviews and tried to find lots of pictures. This is kind of all we know about the guitar tone from that era. So we're not 100% sure what was used to record the Enema of the State guitar tone, except for this one thing. So maybe it was just this, maybe it was a bunch of other cabs as well layered over. But because of that, and because of studio magic, we're, we're, just, we're gonna avoid that, okay? We're gonna go into the, into the live sound. So speaking of live stuff, let's look at Tom's live setup over the years. In the very, very early days, it is apparently noted that Tom DeLong used a Fender Princeton 2x10 combo for his guitar tone. Everyone's got to start somewhere with a small Fender combo is probably great. It's a wonderful place to start, punk, rock, whatever, indie, doesn't matter. They're great, great amps. When they were touring during the Buddha era and the Dude Ranch era, Tom would eventually upgrade to an Ampeg VL502 head with a, a, a Marshall cabinet. Now, Ampeg is most notable for making bass amps, which Mark Hoppus uses the Ampeg bass amps a lot, but they also made guitar amps for a while and then didn't and then did again. So I guess this is a period of time where Tom uh, was using Ampegs. I mean, I'm sure they sounded fantastic, uh, but there's not really any good mods of the Ampeg tone out there, so we're just going to avoid that altogether. The middle era tone, or the 
Enema of the State, Dude Ranch, uh, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket era tone is most notable and kind of everyone's favorite tone, if I'm if I'm if I'm being honest. I mean, it's everyone's favorite tone it is most notably a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier for his dirty tone mixed with a Marshall JCM 900 to get those kind of clean tones. And then he'd switch back and forth between the two uh, for when he needed a really cleaned up part. It would just be the J JCM 900 and we wanted the really dirty stuff. It was a combo of both. So there'd still be a little of that high end clarity along with the mushy distortion that you know punk rock is pretty much known for. And then the late era, which is kind of like the the self-titled album, Angels and Airwaves, and kind of the stuff afterwards, he's been known to use Vox AC30s and Fender Deluxe reverbs, which are fantastic amps, but they're way more on the clean side and way less forgiving. And by that point in his career, he had started using a lot of effects pedals and weird sounds. And it's it's also very difficult to find good plugins that model like the AC50 and the and the Deluxe reverbs reverb for free so we're going to kind of avoid that and we'd have to figure out effects and everything and it'd just be a headache so instead what we're going to do is we're really going to zone in on what i think is the best tom DeLong guitar tone tom tom DeLong, tom DeLong guitar tone tom DeLong, but it should be delonge because i went to france and they said you're pronouncing it wrong i'm all delong and i know it is uh delonge it's a Tom DeLonge tongue twister. What I think is the best Tom DeLonge guitar tone, and that is the Enem of the State live era guitar tone vibes. I'd like to give a shout out to Q182 over on the Blink182 online forum, because he, he or she or they, they compiled a huge list of all these amps with pictures and everything like that. So it was very, very helpful and very useful in this, in this video. There are people that have gone into much further detail with their videos. For example, Little Red Guitars. Uh, you can go check out their videos if you want to deep dive into the amps and the guitars, but this is kind of just a, this is a bare bones. This is, this is like the overview. This is like Blink Guitar Tone 101. One. Now the guitar that I am using for this is a Fender Strat Tom DeLong model that I actually built myself and I'm very, very proud of. Uh, I did a video putting together the whole build. This is a lefty model, which is why I had to build it myself. But basically it's a Fender Highway 1 Strat that I dropped the, uh, the Seymour Duncan Invader pickups into. Now Tom in that era was using a Strat with a Seymour Duncan Invader. So if you want to get that tone, this is the guitar body and pickup to do it. You could use any humbucker though. Literally any humbucker will do. In fact, a JB would be good, any standard humbucker, you could just wire together two magnets from your fridge and plug them in and honestly it would probably be fine. The Invader is a high output humbucker so it has a little bit more high end and it's a little it's a little you know, shriller and a little sharper in the high end which adds to the effect but really anything will do. I'm recording into two channels to create this tone. Basically, just both channels are active. One has the clean amp on it and one has the dirty amp on it. And then you mix them both together to get the cumulative tone that is this Tom DeLonge tone. The clean amp. <laughs> So for our clean tone, we are using a plugin from Poolin Amplification, and this is called the High Brid. It's basically a Marshall clone. It's a it's a clone of a, both a JCM 800 ish and a kind of a Plexi ish. It's a fantastic sounding plugin, and it's gonna be it's gonna get us on our way to that to, to that solid clean tone. I've set it to the PLS channel instead of the JCM style channel, which. I know Tom used the JCM, but for this, it, it was just a little more on the cleaner side. We didn't, you just push it a bit more. You know, I thought it sounded better. I thought it sounded better, so that's what we went with. There's a slight drive, kind of around noon, not a whole lot, just, just to get a little bit of that, we're bad at guitar, so we can hide some of our mistakes, even though we're in clean world. Then I have lots of middle cranked up and lots and lots and lots of high end because Tom's tone was very high end. There's a lot of a lot of high end frequency in it to make it really clear and forward and present. The pool in hybrid is running into the Ignite Amps Nade Ear, Nad Ire, Nad Ire. I'm not sure how to say that. It's an impulse response plugin which basically allows you to load up wave files that are 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 guitar cabinets, so you don't even need a guitar cabinet anymore. 
This is loaded up with forward audio modern rock impulses. Now they have sampled a Marshall 1960s A slant cab. We're using a pair of Celestian GM12s with an SM57 right up against the cone about 0.5 inches away and on both sides to get a nice stereo spread. And I think it sounds good, frankly. Tom used Mesa Boogie cabs, but they had Celestian speakers. And honestly, it's just wood with speakers in it. So it's all pretty much the same so long as the speakers are about the same and that is our clean 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 tone it's not that clean it's a little dirty still but that's that's what that's what makes it good the guitar sounds awesome this guitar sounds awesome the dirty amp First, we're running into a TSE Audio 808, which is basically a Tube Screamer clone. I love this thing. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. And basically, we're just using it to tidy up a bit of the low end coming out of the guitar, just to, just to, just to scoop out a little bit of that low and tighten up the bottom, and then push the guitar into the amp a little hotter. Now, you could do this by just turning up your preamp on your interface. That would be fine too, but I just like that this also has the tone knob, so I can kind of just I can do two things at once. And if I was playing guitar normally, I would have a I would have like a tube screamer clean boost kind of thing going in anyway. So this is running into another pool in amplification plugin, the Lecto, which is a triple rectifier clone. We've got to put to the orange setting and the vintage setting because I think it sounded better. And we're pushing the drive pretty, pretty high. There's a lot of gain on this, but that was the thing is Tom used the Mesa Boogie to get all the gain and the JCM to get the clarity. And then you mix them together and you've got like a clear, dirty thing. And that's, it's great. There's lots of middle and lots of top end again, cause it's just all top end, baby. That, that's what Blink-182 is like to just tons of high end. And then I'm running that into the Ignite Amps Nade Ear, and I'm using the exact same impulse responses as the clean cabinet, because if you look at pictures, you can see that Tom basically just had the same the same cabinets that he would use for, for both amps. And we, we can't say for certain, but the assumption is that it's the same speakers. So we, it's probably safe to assume that you just use the same ones, of course. But if you want to use these and play around with them and change them, you should do that and see what you can get. This is just what I figured out. This guitar does not sound good ever since it broke and got written all over it. <laughs> yeah. That thing's gonna hurt you. This crack is just gonna keep getting bigger. Did he tell you what's gonna happen when he says it's gonna spring off and break your other hand? No! Yes. <laughs> it will. It'll be a big shocker if you're playing. No. <laughs> no. No. No! Would it really break my hand? Yeah. Yes. All right, well, I guess I'll have to break this guitar. And then for the full mix, I used Superior 3 to kind of get some solid, solid drums. The, the, the drum sample pack that I have is actually recorded on Travis Barker's kit that's at John Feldman's place at the moment, which it sounds spectacular and I love it. And I'm also using the Submission Audio Punk Bass, which is modeled after the Mark <laughs> the Mark Hoppus bass tone from, from this era. So, you know, it's gonna give you a solid idea. Now, by no means am I able to uh, write drums at the level that Travis Barker can write at. I can't pretend bass as good as Mark Hoppus does, and I can't even play guitar as good as Tom DeLonge can. And I am in no means by any stretch of the Imagine Blink-182, but this should give you a good idea of what it sounds like all together with this crazy free Blink-182 Tom DeLonge tone, starting in three, two, psych. <laughs> 